Thanks so much, Craig. John, you are the first player this season to hit a home run off of Kodai Senga's ghost <laughs> fork ball. How did you do it? Uh, he just left it up, up out over for me, and um, I just fortunately put a good swing on it. You make it sound so easy. You've been one of the Marlins' hottest hitters lately. What has been the difference maker for you at the plate? It's just relaxing up there, just understanding what I'm trying to do and um, allowing the pitcher to come to me and um, just executing. You played in both games of this double header. How did you find that balance between wanting to go all out but also knowing maybe you needed to preserve some energy for the second game? I don't know how to preserve anything. So, I mean, <laughs> I was just going going to the, you know, as best I could for the first game. Obviously, it didn't go our way. But, um, you know, we're just such a resilient group that um, it didn't phase us whatsoever. And uh, it took us a little bit to get going. Pitching staff did a great job keeping us in it. Um, and then, uh, you know, we are able to put them away there. I don't know if you could hear it or not, but there was a huge group right here behind the dugout saying, let's go Marlins, especially chanting awesome. in that ninth right inning. There, yep. He sees you guys. He sees you. What did it mean to see that kind of support on the road? It's always fun. You know, it's always fun for, for you to have your home fans here and, and cheering us on. And um, we're going to need them down the stretch here. You mentioned when you walked up. I'm tired. How good are you going to sleep tonight? Uh, sleeping a lot better after that win there and getting ready for tomorrow. So Appreciate the time. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Craig, back to you. Well, Skip, first off, how do you describe the emotional swings of a doubleheader? You know, obviously a tough loss in game one, but then you hear the cheers coming from the clubhouse in game two. Yeah, getting a split was huge, honestly. Um, you know, obviously you want to win two games. Uh, but to come back and, and beat uh, Sango, who's one of the better pitchers in the league this year and having an outstanding uh, season uh, for us to come back and, and, uh, and win tonight, um, it, it was, it was, it's a big deal. It's, everyone's a big deal right now, but to, to beat a pitcher like that tonight and in a doubleheader was huge. Just watching that ninth inning unfold, could, could you sense, you know, maybe things are going to go your way in game two? Well, it was. I was sitting in the lunchroom uh, watching it. So, yeah. So I was definitely hoping. Yeah. No, I was definitely hoping. But um, yeah, I mean, we've again, we've done this before all year. It feels like we're coming back. We're always in it, um, and it doesn't matter who it is. And Birdie had a huge day. Mm -hmm. I mean, both games were just giant. Um, Dale with a huge hit uh, there. He's been hitting the ball hard. Just really no love all day, but um, you know, a really good hit. There's value, you know, putting the ball in play. We've talked about that all year. Um, and X had a really nice game. Uh, so yeah, overall, up and down the lineup, just proud of the guys. The bullpen, four and two thirds scoreless, and then having Nardi for the save, just to see them be able to keep it, keep th keep throwing zeros until the offense was able to get. It. Yeah, Puck man, Puck had a huge out to come in and uh, get Cueto out of a jam. Came back in and got through a tough part of the order. Um, yeah, the more Robbie Nardi, I'm uh, just uh, incredible job uh, by all of them. All their stuff was was as good as I've seen it all night to be this or all, all season for, for it to be this late and to see the, their stuff at to this point uh, at this point is um, it's impressive. So, yeah, I, I loved it. Uh, hopefully we uh, will see Scott soon, too, which would be nice. Um, but for those guys to pick up their teammates tonight, position player wise and on the mound, uh, says a lot about who's in that clubhouse. Okay. Uh, he was down today. Yeah, he had some uh, discomfort. Uh, what about Bell just after that? Uh, yeah, he, he was hobbling around. Obviously, you guys saw it. I uh, just saw him in the dugout or in the uh, training room, and uh, he said he'll be fine tomorrow. But uh, So we'll see how he wakes up. It's going to be sore, there's no doubt, but hopefully he's okay. How would you describe, though, what a warrior he is to be able to stay in that ball game, want to do whatever he can to try and help the team after obviously taking that foul, foul ball so close to the knee? We didn't have many players available, <laughs> so <laughs> our bench was light and beat up. Um, so uh, he knew that, um, but it, I think he, I don't think he was coming out of that game no matter what. Um, yeah, it, it, we have a lot of guys like that, and uh, when one of your leaders does that, it shows you, you know, uh, the other guys, you know, wh what this game's all about. And um, Josh has been awesome, and uh, yeah, he, he wasn't coming out of that game. The burger ejection, obviously, really quick there. Just what were you told and just your reaction? Obviously. Yeah, I'm a little uh, upset that, you know, I, I don't, Berger didn't say anything. He put his threw his helmet down out of frustration. Uh, didn't throw it at him. Um, you're, it's a it's a very intense game. A big high level moment in our season in the game. Uh, threw his helmet down. Gets tossed. Didn't mother f anybody. Didn't do anything. Didn't say anything. And gets tossed. By the way, he was right. It was a ball. 
Um, so, I, you know, it's it, that's frustrating. Um, every pitch matters. Get it right. And if you get it wrong, that's okay. But don't don't toss out one of our best players. Uh, where we are in the season, uh, you know, don't be so sensitive. Is is you know what my issue was. Um, let let the you have a conversation, and then if he does something that warrants a toss, you know, I get it. But you can't just toss it to, to toss a guy right now uh, at this part of the season. Um, I, I didn't love it. You were in the dugout, but could you hear the the Let's Go Marlins chants from where you were? Did you hear it through the broadcast? Uh, I did not. No, I was. You know, I mean, you're in the clubhouse. You don't you don't hear much other than watching the the TV. And just your reaction to the fact that there were loud Let's Go Marlins chants here in New York. I got. I didn't hear it, um, but uh, if there was, that's great because you hear "Let's Go Mets" at our stadium a lot. So to have it, uh, uh, you know, over here is is a, a pretty cool thing if that's what it was. The outing from Cueto, what he was able to give you guys? Yeah, to get us into the fifth. You know, he hasn't started in a while. Um, we needed somebody to provide bulk innings today. Um, you know, he gave up, he gave up a couple home runs to Lindor. Um, he's having a fantastic season as well. Um, but other than that, he really minimized damage, uh, damage and uh, gave us what we needed. We needed somebody to get the bulk to get to our back end, and he did that and uh, gave us a chance to win. Did you, uh, did you know the Cubs result in the office? And if not, how'd you find out? Yeah, they were updating it on the broadcast. Um, so, yeah, so we were, that, that's the way we were looking at it, watching it. So, yeah, it was an exciting time, I guess, for you, with different number of different reasons. Out, right? uh, yeah, I think so, yes, yeah. But uh, first off, just the ejection, obviously frustration, uh, called strike three, but it was a ball outside the zone. Just so uh, were you surprised at how quickly the decision was made to toss you from the game? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, it's more just frustration on my part. Um, you know, I had a situation with first and third and two outs and struck out and then, uh, you know, struck out again. And, um, you know, obviously it, Maybe I, I feel like it's a little quick trigger, but, um, you know, I let my emotions get the best of me, and I'm just really, uh, really proud of the, uh, the team and, um, you know, Yoli coming up in that big situation, getting the ball in play. So, um, you know, um, just focus on tomorrow and, uh, you know, move on from this. Where were you when the ninth inning was unfolding? I was in here, just, you know, going crazy. It was, uh, it was me and uh, Johnny Cueto were in here and, um, you know, it was uh, it was really exciting, just you know, get X, you know, leading off the inning and uh, stealing that bag. So, um, you know, he started it off and uh, just great at bats up and down the lineup. And just the last 24 hours ago, from the game getting postponed yesterday, the way Game One unfolded, and then for you guys to do what you seemingly do all year, you find the way to win those games late. Just the roller coaster of what's been the last 24 hours in to be able to pull this one off. Yeah, I feel like it'll be a roller coaster until uh, you know the the end of Sunday and see where we're at. So um, you know, just kind of you know take it take it in stride and um, you know really really glad we uh, split today and um, you know going tomorrow feeling fresh and um, you know hopefully put up another result. Did you say anything or was it just? Yeah, I, didn't, you know, I feel like I'm a pretty calm dude, um, you know, most of the time. So, um, you know, I didn't say anything. Just, uh, you know, I think uh, anytime you you use uh, equipment, you know, to uh, show frustration, it wasn't directed at, um, you know, anybody. It was more directed at my frustration. Well, and that's what Skip said. One of the reasons that he wanted to come out and talk about the situation was because you didn't use profanity. You weren't directing your frustration directly at the home plate umpire. Is that just in the moment, the intensity, you're, you're trying to do the best you can to, to get out the frustration, but make sure that you're also keeping it in check, I guess, in a way? Yeah, yeah. You know, um, obviously, big situation there. And, um, you know, you look up and, um, you know, you see see the scores and whatnot and what implications each situation have for you. So, um, you know, it's with, with five to go, it's uh, you're going to have more emotions and that adrenaline's going to be pumping. And, um, you know, unfortunately, uh, you know, things went the way they did. But, um, you know, I meant no disrespect to anybody. Did you know... Uh to watch the game in here is it the marlins feed or the sny feed um it was the sny feed and then there's like the high home that's like delayed and then there's a high home as well so did you know about the cubs result as you're watching uh yeah yeah we we heard it on the uh, telecast and um you know when when we had that big ninth inning it was, it was huge
Andrew, it's one thing we've talked about for so long, just what you guys are fighting for, everything that's on the line with every pitch, every game. How would you describe just the intensity of that bottom of the ninth and trying to bounce back and win game two? Uh, I mean, that was just a nail-biter the entire time. So, uh, yeah, it was pretty intense. Um, but, I mean, I just went out there like it was the eighth inning again and just did my thing. I was going to say you've pitched in a lot of high-pressure situations, especially, you know, dealing with inherited runners all season long. Do these pitches feel the same as any other pitches that you've thrown this season, or do they feel like they're carrying a little bit more weight? Uh, I wouldn't say more weight. Uh, I know that I've been in some tight situations all year, so, uh, I mean, just like I said, just doing my just doing my thing. So, you know. Have you heard from Tanner? I have not heard from Tanner, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but he had a very beautiful boy, so I'm just proud of him. It's awesome. Just the emotion of the last 24 hours, yesterday getting postponed, game one going the way he did, and then just inning after inning, just guys throwing zeros back and forth before the ninth inning, just mm -hmm. especially with how close everything is with what you're playing for. Uh, I mean, just like I said, it just felt like the like an eighth inning all over again. Uh, I think all the guys were just ready to show what they can prove and get out there and do their thing. Um, obviously, very happy that we scored in the ninth inning. <laughs> uh, no, but I mean, it's just it's just baseball. It's just awesome. So. Did, uh, did the Cubs result filter its way to you before the ninth inning? You know, did you know you were pitching? Uh, the chance of time again? Wait, say that again? Did, did, did you know the Cubs had lost when you took the mound in the ninth? Oh, I have no idea. Okay, no. Okay, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> did you hear the Let's Go Marlins chants from in the crowd while you were in the in the bullpen? Yeah, I did actually. Uh, I was very, I was a little confused at first. I was like, Am I hearing this right? And then uh, I heard two syllables, or uh, I heard Marlins instead of Mets, and I was like, Oh, nice. That's pretty cool. So, yeah, I, I could hear it from the bullpen.